Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Andy, I'm a self-taught software developer, and in this video, what we're gonna talk about is if you are brand new to programming, if you just heard about getting into software development, web development, and you're trying to figure out what you need to do to start, well, this is the video you wanna watch. I'm gonna go through and really lay out a three-month plan for you so that way it's pretty clear what the next steps are, and then you can figure out the rest or at least reevaluate after that. So if you're new here and you're trying to figure out like, who the heck am I, who is this guy that's talking? Well, I'm Andy and I'm a full stack developer and I'm also a mentor to people who are looking to get into this field. So I help people learn the skills that they need as, as well as figure out how to land that first job. So I highly recommend subscribing below. Make sure to also hit the bell icon to get notifications anytime I put out a new video. So without any further ado, let's just dive into it. So who am I talking to? Who is the ideal person who this video is for? So let's say you've watched a few of my videos or maybe watched some other of YouTubers videos and they were talking about how they taught themselves uh, to be a programmer or software developer, web developer, or maybe you just, you know, a friend told you that you could do it and now you're really, you really wanna do it but you don't exactly know where to start. Maybe you bought a course, maybe you are reading a book and you're just like, I'm not sure what the next couple months should look like. So. Let me break down what I think you should do, but also give you reasoning and principles behind how you're gonna do it. So number one thing that you wanna do, no matter what, you, what approach you take, is you got to keep it simple, right? Simplicity is going to be the thing that takes you the next part of your journey. Any sort of complexity is going to kill you. Like anything that's complex. So let's say you're, you're, you're gonna learn Python. If you're going to make your your roadmap very complex and have all these complex applications, and you're going to build the next Airbnb with that, and you're going to build the next Facebook with it. You are, you know, you're setting the expectations high, which is fantastic. I love it, but you've got to keep things as simple as possible. Also, in, included with this is if you're going to learn something like Python or maybe even JavaScript, that's probably one of the most common ones, right? If you're going to buy every course in Udemy or buy like four or five books that you saw on Amazon that was recommended to you, you're making this more complex than it has to be. You're course collecting, which is really bad because you're you're buying a bunch of courses thinking that's gonna help you, but you're adding complexity to this. So those are the, the two things you wanna keep in mind like right off the bat. The last thing I'd say is you want to, anything that you learn, so anything that you learn, whether it's HTML, CSS, JavaScript, C Sharp, Java, you name the programming language, you name whatever you want, you want to make sure that you're using projects or you're building projects along with going through your learning resources. So if you're reading a book, if you're going through Udemy course, you want to be building projects on the side in your portfolio to give you, to make sure that you're using those concepts that you're learning. But not only that, it gives you something that you can demonstrate to an employer potentially that you know what you're doing. So those are my basic keys. Now here's what I recommend, again, if you're super brand new, if you've already got some experience under your belt, if you know HTML and CSS, you know a little bit of JavaScript, this probably doesn't apply to you. But if you just want a simple plan to keep to for the next three months, here's what I recommend. I highly recommend learning HTML, CSS, then JavaScript, Make sure along the way you learn Git as well and just learn about client server architecture. Now this is the basics of web development. So you may ask yourself like, well, I actually wanna be a software developer. I wanna be a programmer. That's fantastic. You don't have to do this route. My simple suggestion, and this is from people who I've talked to people all the time about getting into software development. Most people don't know what they want. Most people are interested in getting a job as soon as they possibly can. They wanna get into this career as soon as possible. They don't wanna wait around. They don't wanna wait you know, five years to learn, learn every nook and cranny of programming and then try to go straight into back end or straight into game development or something like that. So if you're that type of person, I recommend just starting with the basics of web development. So HTML, CSS, JavaScript, like I said, Git, that's kind of universal amongst programming, but, and then learn client server architecture. So that's my basic recommendation. You can, t it doesn't, it's not the right way. There's people who have, have done it many different ways, but after you go through that, then you can maybe change your path. After those three months of learning those basics, you can go in and change. Now, by the way, my recommendations come from learning or spending about 15 hours per week studying. So if you don't have that much time, maybe this is a four or five or six month plan. But if you can at least get 15 to 20 hours in, this, you can make good progress. Now, let's just go through each very quickly. So HTML and CSS, how long should you spend on it? My general recommendation is bare minimum, I'd say one to two weeks, maximum about a month. And I highly recommend a good learning resource is the Headfirst uh, HTML and CSS book. Now, that's a really nice way to learn it. For, that's how I learned HTML and CSS, so that's how I learned the bulk of the basics because the Headfirst series really is good at teaching things in a fun way more than anything else, but it also gives you just what you need to know and not everything. It's not most comprehensive, but you don't need to know everything. You just need to know the basics to move forward. So 
My recommendation is if you have never heard of HTML and CSS, if you, HTML and CSS, if you've never touched it, spend about a month learning it, use the head first uh, HTML and CSS book, and then move on. Okay, so one to two weeks if you're really well-rounded in that area, a month if you really need work. Then the next thing you wanna spend is the, at least the next two months learning JavaScript. And obviously the learning resource I would recommend as well is the head first JavaScript series. I swear I don't get paid by these guys, but it's just, it's what I use and what I recommend to people and it seems to really resonate. But the head first JavaScript book in the same manner that the head first HTML book, it's a really good learning resource. It will teach you the basics. It's fun. Uh, it's not gonna teach you everything. You don't have to memorize stuff. It has a lot of fun activities to do. And so you wanna work your way through that. Now, with both of these, with both HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, here's the key. You want to build projects as you're learning. So with HTML and CSS, I would recommend building one or two static websites as you're learning. So you wanna basically, you could do something like build your own personal website. You could build a website for a friend. Maybe they have some sort of business that they'd like an online presence for, but just keep it simple. Like don't try to rebuild, uh, you know, your favorite website. Like, you know, don't try to rebuild Google or like ESPN or, uh, this website I go to clearly, like whatever cool website you go to on a daily basis that looks really cool, you don't have to build that. Just build a simple website for yourself or someone else. That's for HTML and CSS. When you go to JavaScript though, you want to probably create about two to four projects depending on your skills and how quickly you can progress. They should be simple. Remember, simplicity is what I recommended in the beginning. So you wanna keep it dead simple with this. So tic-tac-toe game could be a really simple one, right? Maybe a Frogger game or some other sort of video game that you liked as a kid that you know would be, would be very simple to build. Um, also a simple web app. So you could build something like a to-do list. That's a very common one, a calculator of some sort. Like keep it simple. You, you don't have to build the next Airbnb. That's the one mistake I see so many people make. They're like, you know, I don't have any projects I can build because I haven't thought of a good business plan. I haven't thought of a good business idea. It's like, you're just trying to learn JavaScript, man. Like you don't need to learn, how, you don't have to build a, an actual application. You just need to start with something simple. Don't undersell this idea. Like don't, don't, uh, don't think that just by building a calculator app, it's like, oh, it's, that's not good enough. You're just working on the basics. You're trying to learn the fundamentals. The first three months, you're not gonna become a software developer or programmer most, most likely. So you just want to build something simple to get your skills underneath you. So HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, those, you know, during the first three months, you're gonna focus mostly on JavaScript to really get the problem solving skills better, to understand the, some of the basics of just programming in general. Now, I'd also mentioned Git and client server architecture. Now, Git is, if you don't know about Git, I highly recommend doing a little research. It's basically, if you've never heard about it before, it's a way to work on code or work on a project with other people. Right, so if I'm on my computer here and you're on your, your computer, we can work on a project, the same code collaboratively, and it's a way to save the state or the history of that project over time. So you know how like when you're working on a Word document and you, you're like sitting there and you don't wanna delete a paragraph because you might wanna use it later, well, Git sort of plays that rule of allowing you to see what you had in the past in your project and maybe use that code later on. You can find more information about it, but you wanna get comfortable with the Git command line, using GitHub, uh, posting projects on GitHub. And the last part, learning about client server architecture, that's just a basic paradigm of how the internet works, how, the, how websites work, so you wanna understand the basics of that. So maybe you need to understand more about HTTP traffic, networking, and the internet. So overall, that's my recommendation. Learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript with the head first books. Uh, learn Git as well, as well as client server architecture. Learn more about the internet. And in your first three months, that's pretty good. Make sure you have projects to show for it. Don't just go through the books and figure that's enough. Once you've completed those three months, then you are going to know more about A, whether you even like this or not. Maybe you don't even like it. And then B, you'll have a better sense of things. You'll have more knowledge under your under your feet or under your, in, in your tool belt or in your brain. And then you can move on and do something else potentially. You can either take it in a different direction. You can continue learning web development, maybe learn a JavaScript framework if you haven't already. But at that time, you can make that decision. For the first three months, just focus on doing the work. From there, you can figure everything else out. All right, guys, and that's really it. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. Leave a like, leave a comment if you have any questions. I'll try my best to answer. Other than that, if you haven't already, I highly recommend joining my free Facebook group. Uh, I post a lot of content there that I don't post on YouTube. I also have some live Q&A events from time to time to help answer your questions. So highly recommend going and joining there at andysterkowitz.com forward slash group. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, peace out.